So I'm not going to say I don't have a whole lot for you today because we discussed that yesterday. It's an easy trap to fall into. When we say we don't have a whole lot, all of a sudden it's 10 after 9 and we're trying to wrap things up. So with this, I have noticed I say S-O a lot. You probably have noticed that. The athletic trainer, Jerry, can you be here please? Maybe yes, maybe no. I, sh I should try to switch that to all right. That'll be one of the things. Maybe you can get a cruel chuckle out of that from uh, some of your college professors. Sitting in calculus class, the professor would always say, so, not, not that. Go, all right. If you will, draw these and we'll go over them. And if you will this, if you will that. Anyway, all right, the top left one, you are drawing that compound. The other three, you are naming. And yes, you can use the shortcut on only which one can you for sure use the shortcuts on there. The abbreviated names, for instance. Just think about that for a moment, and then we'll cross that bridge when, when we get there. All right, which one would you want to start with? Just top left and work our way towards the east? That way is east, correct? Is anybody terrible with their direction? Sometimes I'm bad with directions. Uh, just take a left two blocks past 41st Street. Okay, well, a, a good rule of thumb to maybe what's, what goes north, south? Streets or avenues? Avenues go north, south. Streets go east, west. Was that a guess or did you just know that right away? All right, one way to look at that, of course, the most common way to look at that, it used to be that 41st Street and Minnesota Avenue were, was probably the busiest intersection in Sioux Falls. That is not the case anymore. And you should probably know the busiest intersection in Sioux Falls. I'm not saying you should know it, but you probably do. Always well, just guess. Go to the barn. Because it, it's noble. Yeah, 41st, no, not 41st in Kiwanis. Barn and noble, put them together. Go to the barn because it's noble. Barnes and noble. Where is Barnes and noble? Yeah, 41st in Louise. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> I wonder, heavy traffic is, is probably good, but are there any Wendy's, hamburger Wendy's is what I'm talking about, because that's on 41st in Louise too. Having that traffic is probably good, but some people, oh, going in there and getting back out of there is probably pretty tough. Maybe yes, maybe no. Just trying to trying to lighten the mood a little bit, so we it was it was kind of a later night than what I thought. And like I said, for the second night in a row driving you ladies, we made it home without having to stop. Hey, two and a, it's pretty sad when we say two in a row is a record. Uh-huh. I was a little worried. I'm not going to lie, passing that semi right away on the interstate. You were, not, you were thinking so. Did it feel like the bus was slipping a little bit? It, I think the had gone back and, and I don't know if that's a combination of the wind coming from the south. The temperature was probably just right, but more so I think it's those little darn grooves they cut into the interstate. 
because it, it looks like once they pour the concrete, it look, I don't know if it's like a type of rake. Okay. And I, it may help with buckling, but I would think that would be more so a 90 degree angle rather than parallel like these. But it might help with buckling too. It depends. I, I thought you were talking about this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Going this way. So, yeah. In case we're talking about this. <laughs> I, you probably can't believe you just saw that. Do we have some volunteers to come up and name this? Or the only thing is then we got to turn the computer down. Yeah, we'll just handle ourselves. I'll hold the marker. You tell me what to do. Well, that's a hexagon. Yeah, that's how you're going to want to draw the sugars when we get there. It's probably not very conducive to draw them that way. So, uh, all right, up to this point, what do you have? Yeah, that's, say that's axiomatic though. Does anyone know what that term means? It's something that you probably already know, kind of like a rhetorical question when you do that. So what do we have right now if we didn't change anything? We've got toluene. And what number is this methyl group assigned when you call it toluene? Yeah, what number is this assigned when we call this toluene? You're, when, when, okay, when you say this, you're telling us that methyl group is on which carbon? First one. Yes, that's what we're trying to illustrate. Yep. Because otherwise, if you don't do that, Sorry, the phone rang, so I had to cut that out for just a moment. Okay, because if we don't use the term toluene, then these numbers got to change. Then you'd have 1, 3, dichloral, and then wherever you'd want to call this methyl group would have to go <clears throat> Excuse me, in the numbering system. But when you call it the common name, that's automatically saying that is carbon number 1 just like these two also follow that same pattern. We just haven't covered that yet. All right. Now we've got our one established with toluene. So where do these chlorine groups go then? Do you want me to go left? No, 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 no. You want me to go east or west? How many times from here? Okay, combining what you said, two away from this one, it was what we thought you meant, and right across from it. Combining what is, would we be correct in presuming that's what you meant? Yep, and yep. All right. Purple here. Does it have a common name first of all? Yeah. Yes, it does. Because if we cover this up, what would we have right now? We would have phenol. 
or hydroxybenzene, but phenol is probably easier to work with. And when you do that, where is carbon number one when we say phenol? It's with the OH and it's up on top, all right? We can already call this phenol because we've already established that. And one of the reasons it gets this name, notice that suffix is OL, okay? Too bad it's not uh, phenolol. If it was phenolol, then you can say the suffix was LOL. <laughs> we, we told a funny. <laughs> LOL. Okay. All right. Now we've got our phenol, carbon number one. What else is branching off of that? benzene ring. An ethyl group on which carbon? Okay. Now, you can do this. We can say 3-ethyl phenol. Is there anything else you could call that? You could, you could change. I just heard something go beep. I wanted to make sure it wasn't this microphone, but you could put one, you could put a letter on there too. You could put metaethylphenol because when we go back to having those, uh, that diagram, this was X, two spots away was the meta position. You could also put metaethylphenol. All right. And I, I would see, I don't know if there's one right way to approach that. Is sometimes if you're going back and forth and back and forth, it, I don't think you'd confuse yourselves as long as you know how to do both of them. Just like, is, is there two possible ways to set the volleyball or is there just one? Because sometimes it, it looks like we do this from time to time and then sometimes it looks like we do this. Is Am I just imagining things? So, okay, but they don't do both. Okay, fair enough. Are we comfortable with this then? All right, Greeno over there. Does it have a common name? Nope. So we don't have a toluene and we don't have a phenol. All right. So therefore. You have to use what in the naming then? Benzene, okay? Therefore, we know we've got benzene. Go ahead and erase these. Okay. So we've got benzene. Now, you have to work on your alphabetization. What do we see branching off of that benzene ring? We see a halogen derivative as bromo, and C3H7 is what? It's a propyl group. All right. And what's this deal here? It is a butyl group. It's tertiary butyl group. I wonder, what happens if you say butyl, butyl, butyl too many times? Is that, isn't that kind of like the plot of Beetlejuice? Have you ever seen that movie? They, if you say Beetlejuice too many times, something bad happens? Beetlejuice pops up. Beetlejuice pops up. Mm -hmm. Is Beetlejuice bad? Yeah. Okay. So let's not say butyl, butyl, butyl a lot then. It would be four times because there are four butyl derivatives. All right. So we got bromo here, and you correctly said this is a propyl group. So we'll just do this, obviously B and P, and then you had correctly said this was tertiary butyl. Now, why is that a little confusing? We do not count the T, okay? Because only the isopropyl, or if this was 
an isobutyl group. Then you go by the I. All right. Alphabetizing. What comes first? Okay. If that's the case, this one comes first. So we always need more space than what we need. And if we have plenty, then fine. One dash bromo dash what? We, this better be correct this time. All right. So, all right. Four carbons away. And then the last one is what? Two dash propyl. All right. Are we good with the green one? Then finally, the last one. It's something new. Does it have a common name? Yes, it does. Okay. It's even if you, even if uh, you didn't use the common name for this, it's really not that far off from carboxylic, carboxybenzene, since this is what the organic family is, carboxybenzene. But with that, once you say benzoic acid. Where is your first carbon? Yeah, wherever the COOH is. So here is our first carbon. And we've got a halogen derivative on there. So we've got what number for the halogen? Oh, yep, you can do that too. Well, we'll put them both. Okay, so three dash chloro benzoic acid, or like you had said, meta dash chloro. All right, both of those mean the same thing. And it's one. Just like when you're talking about that setting, whether you do this or this, pick one of those two and do uh, what you feel is most comfortable for yourself. Okay, right outside, we good? Left middle. See, you just never know which row we're going to ask. Okay, so right middle. See, I'm not looking at by a point. Okay, right middle. We're good. Left outside. All right. So tomorrow we'll have something assigned for you, and then the following day we'll assign it as well. But notice those are not due the next days. You'll have Monday to work on them as well. All right, we'll catch up to you next time.